Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer has been talking this morning. He set out his plans for the economy, warning that without new policies, the UK risks falling behind Eastern European nations. Let's quickly have a listen to what he said earlier. You know, I want to create an economy where growth is the answer we give before tax or spend. So joining me now is our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, who was there to see the speech live. Good morning, Liam. Uh, what did he have to say? Hi, Bev. I'm here in the heart of the city of London, outside the Bank of England, of course. Keir Starmer actually gave that speech in an office building just behind the Bank of England. In general, Bev, he didn't really say very much because he doesn't really need to say very much. That's Labour's strategy, a few platitudes about wanting a lot more growth and stability and not coming up with unfunded uh, tax cuts or spending pledges, as he calls them. It was really a display of kind of power. You had people there up on stage with him, people like Gus O'Donnell, the former cabinet secretary, used to work for John Major. You had Jim O'Neill, the Goldman Sachs investment banker and former Labour minister. Andy Haldane, who used to be chief economist at the Bank of England. The great and the good really huddling around Labour now, giving a sense that they are the party of government and he was quite clever to just sit back, not say very much at all and just let the Tories have this internal war that they're going to have today on the Northern Ireland Protocol. You get the sense, Bev, there are a few news lines, things like he wants to break us out of a, a, a high tax, low growth doom loop. The fact he thinks that some kind of role for the European Court of Justice is inevitable in Northern Ireland. But I got the overwhelming sense he didn't want to make too many headlines today, Bev, because he didn't want to get in the way of Rishi Sunak's bad headlines that are already emerging on this Northern Ireland protocol deal. Yeah, I was looking at what Keir Starmer was going to say with his five-point plan. Everyone has a five-point plan these days, don't they? And like you, I couldn't really see what was different. Do you know what? I couldn't see what was different. I couldn't see what was different to what he's proposing to what Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng tried to do with their growth plan. How is it different to that proposal? Exactly right. He was asked by one of us journalists in the Q&A afterwards, would you cut personal taxation? Would you lower the basic rate of income tax? And he said, if you ask me about tax, if you ask me about spending, my answer always starts with growth. We need economic growth. We need growth up and down the country, which sounded a lot like Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng. He even came up with a policy that the Tories have been trying to get through the House of Commons, but their backbenchers won't allow it, to loosen up planning rules so we can build more infrastructure, more bridges, more reservoirs, more houses above and beyond everything else, Bev. So it sounded like a kind of Tory manifesto, but there was no uh, costings at all. It was very, very vague. And the whole point of what Keir Starmer was trying to do, Bev, it's a bit like that prawn cocktail offensive. You're too young to remember it, but I remember it. Back in the mid-90s, as Tony Blair and Gordon Brown were gearing up for office, they went round the boardrooms of Britain and they had lots of bad lunches with that eponymous starter of that period, the, the prawn cocktail. Never have so many crustaceans died in vain, said then Tory grandee and cabinet minister Michael Hesseltine. Because, but he knew Labour were going to win. And there's a sense now that Labour are gearing up for office. So what are they doing? They're going round the City of London. Rachel Reeves, the, the Shadow Chancellor, who mentions in every speech that she used to work at the Bank of England in that building behind me, and indeed she did, she's presenting herself and Keir Starmer as a credible pairing, people who can manage the economy, grown-ups who won't frighten the horses. They're everything they're trying to say that Jeremy Corbyn isn't. Keir Starmer, he hasn't got the pizzazz of Tony Blair. The room doesn't fill with electricity the way it did when the former Labour leader spoke. So he's just trying to be very low-key, very safe, trying to not frighten the horses as Labour inch towards power. Yeah. He's, by all accounts, he's a workhorse, isn't he? I was, I was talking to somebody who knows him relatively well over the weekend and was saying that he's, he's actually kind of polar opposite 
to Boris Johnson, whereby Boris Johnson was flamboyance and brush strokes. Keir Starmer, even when he was uh, starting out as a barrister, was all about the methodical detail, going through the pages with a highlighter pen, getting the detail right. I wonder if he's comfortable right now being able to give these speeches without any detail. It doesn't feel like his natural kind of spiritual home, does it? But as you say, he's playing a very safe hand. I think he's very comfortable giving, frankly, low wattage speeches. Even when he came to his kind of so-called clap lines, as we say in political journalism, he didn't even raise his voice. There's no real change in the tone. It strikes me, Bev, that Labour have made the calculation at the highest level that all they need to do is not be Jeremy Corbyn and not be the Tories. They're calculating that a lot of the country, they've had enough of political drama over recent years with three chancellors and three prime ministers and bond markets going haywire because of economic announcements, even though that's a much more complex story than most people think. So this, this speech for me, it really smacked of steady as she goes. Don't give any detail because the detail can be picked apart by analytical journalists who are looking to look for holes in your plans. But it did sound broadly like a kind of Middle England centre-right consensus. Lots of talk about low taxation as and when the time comes, but also for more Labour-leaning voters, lots of talk about an active state. We can't stand by while the market fails was one of the lines he used. We can't stand by while the planning system favours the rich and doesn't give people a foot up on the ladder of opportunity. Getting Britain out of what Starmer called uh, this high tax, low growth, low wage doom loop that we're in. Uh, a phrase that he nicked actually from a pretty well known newspaper columnist.